G'day everyone, uh, welcome to uh, Patreon with X Resart. My name is Chrissy and we are here for our Bear Waterfall project. Okay, now just a couple of things that I needed to talk about before I go any further. Uh, first of all, the uh, the art supply. I've also got the um, the reference in the bottom right, bottom left hand corner. I beg your pardon. And I just wanted to bring your attention. You know, you can't see it, but I've got this. I'm trying this new um, uh, masking film, and um, the masking film that I normally buy mask like masking film by express it um yeah they don't um although i've been purchasing it from my local art shop and i know that you can get it on amazon but um i you know i i thought i had some sheets uh sheets but they were actually the wrong things i was stencils but it just so happens that i'm using this um uh, which also is the same. It's what they call is a frisket. Uh, the packaging, I actually tore it up, but um, I had to stick it so you could see. I bought this from my local art shop. They've, they're not selling the mask kit by Express It. And they're, they're, um, they're selling this, so I thought I'd give it a go. It is low tack. Okay, uh, all I've got to tell you is that it is low tack. It's new. And it's very clear, and I bought it on a roll. Ah, uh, g'day, Carol. Hi, Cherry. Hi, Kathy. And I bought it on a roll, and it's it's actually quite, um, you know, it's oh, you can't see it, but it's actually shiny. It's a it's very different to, and you might see how this is matte, and this is the the last bit of mask mask that I've got from Express It which I really love and I've been using it for like years and yeah anyway uh, I thought well look I'll give it a go um, and I just wanted to um, just wanted to apologize for my hands the weather is killing me the the cold weather is cutting my skin it's cutting everywhere so you'll have to excuse me for that as well because you get to see my hands and that's the last thing you want to see is cuts and bruise cuts at least from the weather but anyway i digress i digress so yeah there is this um frisket so i'm just going to put this aside but as you, but look oh yeah this is probably a good way it's clear there it is because what i did was um you know um i've gone ahead and uh prepared but it's clear so I don't know if if you're using uh, masking film and if you haven't been able to get your hands on um, Express It, well, you know, uh, this is something. Uh, anyway, I'll just put that aside just for the moment. Um, yeah, and I... Um, in Australia, I get... The, um, in Australia, I just walked into my... Um, local one of my uh, local art shops which is called Eckersley's which is you know I, I suppose in the US they've got their Michaels and um, Hobby Lobby I think you know those kind of pl uh, art places uh, but there's also Amazon of course uh, for those people that are in Europe um, yeah but any anyway I, I just thought I'd mention that but yeah I like the Express It masking film too. Yes, me too. Um, it had grid lines. Yes, look at that. Look, the grid lines. So much better. I don't know why they do that. Why they just all of a sudden take it away from us. Um, uh, yeah, grid lines make it. Yes, it does. Kathy, I agree. And it even says mask it. There you go. Uh, George, I'm um, sorry. Uh, Cherry says, I use frisket and mine is shiny too. There you go. Express express it. Don't make it anymore. Well, there you go. Like, um, you know, it's a sad day for us artists, isn't it? Oh, geez. Okay, so, well, that's all I've got left. 
from Miles Good. Bugger is all I'm going to say. Big, big bugger. All right. So, having said that, but you know what? On camera, it's much easier to see and it's not so... Yeah, yeah. It's, see, it's not so shiny and it's actually quite good for me when I'm working. But I still preferred the mask. But anyway, but look, there you go. Now, when it comes to... As you can see, I've done very little of the line art. Um, I haven't gone into a great bit of detail because if you see the reference, when we're talking about detail, um, we're going to be using a lot of our, for example, um, when it comes to the very end, I'm not saying right now, but when it comes to the very end, you know where we've got all of this water that it's just flicking, like all of these droplets that are flicking out. That's going to be like the last things that we do uh, and the texture. And we're going to use, you know that trick that we do where we dust a bit of pastel on our uh, project and then we get our masking film and we're going to press... Uh, pre how did I do that? Oh my gosh. Um, we're going to press and that's how we're going to get our little droplets. But this is like the, the most end, like the absolute end. So, having said that, um, I've got pastel pencils by my side. We're not going to be using pastel pencils today. I've got paper towels. I've got uh, all of uh, the colours and I've actually got them in little stacks in their little groups. Um, I've got them all by my side. And this time, uh, compared to what we did yesterday, we used um, in our, in our uh, deer waterfall, we used uh, brushes for the background, which is what I enjoy the most. I enjoy that the most, but um, I just need to also um, use the soft tool sponges for those people that um, struggle with the pastel dust because the brushes, when we use the brushes in the background, the way I do, you know, with all of uh, these big brushes or the bigger brushes, the bristle brushes, look, it's gone green from yesterday's uh, project. Um, it does create a lot of dust and so people may have a problem with that. So I just wanted to show the differences. Uh, the differences. We're still going to get uh, similar background effects. Uh, but to be honest, my preference is using the brush. But you know, uh, because I feel that I get a, a much smoother effect. But you know, we, we will use the brush to... I don't know, to get some nice smoother effects. Although the soft tools, um, you know, the soft tool sponges, here we go, soft tool applicators. And I'm only talking about this for the people that are just uh, coming into uh, Patreon with x Art and are wondering about all of the tools that we use. Um, the pan pastels, sorry, the soft tools and the soft tool applicators are made specifically for application with the pans, okay? And I mean, there are people that use uh, the uh, soft tool sponges to blend uh, pastel pencils, uh, soft uh, um, soft pastels. So they do have, um, they they are great value. But you know, you know me, I will use every tool under the sun to get whatever whatever uh, outcome we're looking for. So. Having said all of that, I shall put uh, these sorts of things aside. Uh, again, I'm starting off with, I've got my glassine paper. I've got um, a brand new uh, watercolor. Well, not water. I always call it watercolor. Get this out of your head, Chrissy. Um, a pastel palette. Uh, pastel palette. So I'm just going to put that aside just for the moment. I'll just put that for the moment. Now, when we're looking at our reference, there's, um, 
there's soft uh, blurry backgrounds and uh, before I even say that the pastel mat I'm using pastel mat 30 by 40 centimeters as you can see this is light green um, and you can say to me Chrissy why did you choose this color pastel mat simple question yes and I'll give you a simple answer um, the background there is a method to the madness um, the background is mostly light okay uh, and I figured that if we if we had a, a darker color pastel mat then we would have to probably keep on putting more layers again however um, we are going to cover the whole um, you know the whole sheet so I suppose if you don't have you don't have to have uh, pastel green you can have maybe a lighter color of the pastel mat uh, paper so there you go so there that's um, another thing that I wanted to also mention and to mention I uh, put as I said I put the masking film uh, on the whole page and I cut around the uh, the areas that I wanted to have masked I am going to slowly slowly cut off areas as I go only because particularly like with this frame I really want the edges to be nice and sharp so that's uh, my reasoning behind that and also uh, and it looks like this of course this frame looks like it's on a table or on some kind of um, flat surface and I wanted to make sure that you know I have that feel or that look there so there's another reason there so anyway having said all that I'll get uh, stuck into it um, okay okay uh, I've managed to do the line art still need to add masking film that's okay all good all good and the good thing is is that on replay you can um, play back and stop and start as many times as you want the colors that I have here are and here we go they're all in a stack though the raw umber group the um, turquoise group I have the uh, what have I got here the permanent yeah yeah the permanent green um, the permanent green I have the thalo green group I have the um, red iron oxide group the neutral gray group the yellow ochre group and of course our black and white so putting all of these aside I'm uh, as I as I uh, pull the pans in I will mention the colors that I'm using um, and I've just got them just beside me as you can see some here and um, yep here we go so um, we can start from left to right hang on I've got burnt sienna did I, did I have the burnt sienna group in here just give me a moment ah yeah and I forgot to put in the burnt sienna group here we go hang on I thought I had it next to me silly me hang on hang on I've got to get it out uh, oh well, this is a good opportunity this is how I uh, store my pans some people don't or some artists don't uh, have that um, have the trays for me uh, the way I store my pans um, I find that the trays are useful because you know like I pull you know once I finish once I finish a, um, a project I put them all in the trays and I start again yeah so it'll be interesting to see how uh, you stack your pans but anyway okay Hang on a 
a sec, I just want to just just putting in my um my reference. Okay, so the colour and interesting with uh, with this uh, uh, with this reference on the background, it's almost like that there is a window, and there's a window here, and it's extremely blurry. So we're going to have to trust the process. Uh, you know, paint what you see almost. So you know, oh, I can't believe I just did that. Oh, jeez. Oh well. Don't you just hate that? Well, this is a new um, new masking film. I mean, a apart from the dark bits, there's not very many dark bits. It's mostly lighter bits. So this one is dark, and we're going to have to probably get more layers down. But that's okay. Only to begin with. Uh, the soft tool sponge that I'm using is the round. Yes, it is quicker than the brushes, but as you can see, look, there is a difference when it comes to layering. Um, hence the way I favour the brushes, but you know, let's see how we go with this. And it's only just there. Uh, next week, I'm going to show you uh, um, very briefly the how to do the line art on Affinity Photo. So for those who have got it, and I know that there is a few that have. Oh, wow, I didn't want that to be there. Oh my gosh. Needable eraser. Come to the rescue. I went over that bit. Don't want to go there. Anyway, I'm going to cover it so it doesn't really matter. All right. Let's just leave that there. See, as you can see, you, and I'm sure that you can see uh, that um, the sponge tool only fills the surface to the top, and you yeah, as with the brush, uh, the bristles um, actually go right into the tooth, and you, although it is a slower process. Um, you end up with a more solid color but anyway so the choice is yours you can go with the brushes but um, I, I, I need to do this as well this way for those who are not into bristle brushes yeah well the masking film is holding up which is good I'm pleased about that. Okay, I'll just put that aside just for the moment. Uh, colors, bringing out colors. I'm going to be using neutral grays. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, in this area on the top here. I want to use the raw umber and I will be using the raw umber tint need to bring out my paper towel Just on top there. Here we go.
And also wanted to bring up the lighter, uh, the lighter color pastel mat works. You know what? I, I, you know, some people might think I'm a bit crazy, but um, I feel that the anthracite, the dark blue, the dark green, uh, all of the darker colored pastel mat, the pastel some for some reason um, goes in um, the tooth much more easily I know this is crazy I know this is crazy because you'll say well look pastel mat is the same um, it is the same but I don't know colors vary and it all depends I suppose on the pigment that goes down I, I don't know I don't know for sure like I can't I can't comment and you know make a very bold statement but this is the experience that I'm getting you know I'm going to try to refrain from bringing out my bristle brushes but it's my bristle brushes that are going to give me the the outcome that I want um, And then there's the board, you know, like the pastel mat board. Well, that's like a whole new ball game. Um, and you're going to say to me, Chrissy, you know what? It's pastel mat. It is the same. It is. The same. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's pastel mat. It works exactly like pastel mat. But there are differences. OK. Yeah. there is a, um, a there is a difference and I've been using pastel mat board extensively I have a, I have a lot of experience on both the paper and the board and and the different colors and this is what I've um, come across you know um, hang on uh, just let me make a straight line here for a minute I just um, I want to capture what's in the the reference in the background so there we go all right um, okay Cherry says I'm using a light gray pastel mat it seems smoother too uh, than the darker colors interesting Kathy says less tooth in the lighter colors do you think yes yes I, I, I you know oh. you know call me crazy but this is what I'm getting I don't know I don't know I don't I, I don't know how to explain it other than how I'm explaining it <laughs> The different colored pastel mat is different. They they are different. Look, there's even a slight tinge of yellow ochre just right there. See, that's the problem. See? That's why I go the brushes because I get, and plus I'm a bit heavy handed with the soft tools. Then the soft, uh, the, the soft tool applicators do fray for me. Um, anyway. Uh, raw umber tint, uh, all in this area here. Now it's not white. Uh, in the reference, it's more white, I would say, more neutral grey. Um, I wanted to leave enough. I want it to, when the water comes in, all of the little uh, the splashes. I want it to uh, show up. You could use neutral grey if you wanted to. Um, Is here 
It's just, uh, you could use that. You could use that if you wanted to. Let's have a go. Let's go neutral grey instead. I mean, it is going down faster, no two ways about it, but it just feels different. And of course, I'm, I'm going to munch up my soft tools applicators. And blending it, just blending it through Looks like a room. Yes, it does. Yeah, exactly. You know, like this frame is sitting on a, could be a table. I don't know. It could be a shelf. I don't know. But yeah. So it's about there. Okay, so let's just put that aside just for the moment. Uh, the color that... Um, is popping out to me. It is the yellow ochre extra dark. I just want to wipe this down. Just in this area here. Now if you don't have yellow ochre extra dark and you have yellow ochre, all you do is you mix uh, yellow uh, yellow ochre with a bit of black on a separate um, uh, separate piece and you will get your ye yellow ochre extra dark because the darks are made up of the uh, the original pigment and black and if you're going lighter then it'll be the original pigment and titanium white so Yes, so yeah, so next week um, I'm going to, before we start one of our, uh, before we start our session, I thought we might, um, I might show you how to um, use Affinity to do your line art. Now, if there are any questions that you wanted to know about Affinity Photo, uh, what would be a good idea is to uh, let me know uh, beforehand so I can uh, prepare for it uh, to show you. Um, yeah. But um, that is what I wanted to, because that's something that you, you know, when it comes to line art, if you're creating your own projects, you know, you want to... Um, you know, I supply you with the lineup, but if you've got some uh, projects that you want to do on your own, you know, um, it's good to know. Now, remember the ugly stage. There's always an ugly stage. Um, I'll give you a giggle. They say we're going to get a few days of a heat wave and it might reach 30. <laughs> Sorry. It just, that came out very naturally, Cherry. Yes, that is a giggle. Very much a giggle. Heat wave. Well, heat wave here is, you know, 
in the like 45 like like 40 and above for us is a heat wave yes but cherry yes you did make me laugh yes <laughs> oh dear actually you know what's very interesting if we're talking about if we're talking about weather uh, both of my sons live in the northern part of Australia and you know like right now at this hour it's about 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time and it's about 13 degrees okay like I'm it's freezing fast like and you would be laughing hearing that well that's actually quite warm considering where I live but anyway where Kathy lives for example at, um, at you know you'd be what, what would it be there like 10 or something or 9 un, below 10 but anyway to cut a long story short uh, my son, one of my sons who said hello, to, was just ringing up to say g'day, um, said to me, Mom, it's really, really cold here. And I go, really? I go, what's the temperature? And he said to me, 20 degrees. And I went, <laughs> now that is a giggle. 30 degrees. He says, Mum, I almost had to put the heater on. I go, what? <laughs> oh, dear. But anyway, so if we're talking about temperatures, you know, that's the northern part of Queensland. He lives in Townsville. So should I say any more than that? Um, okay. Carol says, with Affinity Photo, I can't drag the colors out when doing a color match. Can you show how to do that? Make a color palette from the picture. Okay. Uh, let me write all of these things down. Uh, making a color palette. In affinity okay all right that's two things we can go through that's that all right there's that okay yes Kathy 30 30 here is a beautiful day yes it is <laughs> okay the color that I'm using here just on the top here um, is the burnt sienna extra dark Okay, nine here in inland. Yep. Okay, northeast Victoria. Yep. Twenty is our usual summer. Only problem is we don't have aircon. <laughs> sorry, Cherry. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, you said a giggle, and I'm giggling all the way. Okay. Okay, now I've got this, I'm applying the uh, soft tool applicators on the light green pastel mat. And it's probably looking nice and smooth there for you. But I can see it's actually quite grainy still. And I probably have to add more uh, pastel. Um just let me check if I was to use the bristle brush what would happen mm. it's the it's the paper okay 
bit of the yellow ochre Now always remember this is just a guide okay just a guide um, don't have to do exact exact you know if you feel that you want to that's fine but you know I'm not deviating, deviating too far from it but um, okay I've just noticed um, a little bit of green permanent green um, extra dark just hang on let me just wipe this down just about there I just want to blend it you would yes of course <laughs> I mean I'm even laughing at my son he said oh 20 he goes mum it's freezing I went what <laughs> and he's in Townsville which is like the northern part of Queensland I'm thinking Now, just to let you know, um, uh, you just have to trust the process. With the background being very blurry, it's not until when you start to do, say, for example, uh, this particular subject, which is the focal point, really, um, that the background doesn't look as bad as what you think it, it does. Okay, I'm just letting you know because um, uh, it is you know there is an ugly stage okay so burnt sienna extra dark I just want to start touching up some areas here all it is I'm just looking at areas where You know where they need to be that's all uh, a bit of the neutral gray just in this bit here I feel that it needs to be a little bit lighter just in that area there that's a very good question Carol actually I'm just having another look at your um, uh, color palette I really like that question so yeah we'll go through that just here you know what it's almost uh, purpley it's almost just a little bit darker I think just just a tad bit down here I'll put that aside that was uh, neutral grey this is the, the tint just on top Hang on, let me do this. There we go. Okay, a bit of the burnt sienna extra dark just about here. And a bit of the yellow ochre here. In that spot there. 
Don't see any extra dark. Carol, I look up colours but would like to save them for reference. Mm. Bit of the green. Just, I don't know, it's about there. Yellow ochre. believe it the um, the water that is sort of coming coming across through out of the frame and onto the let's just say tabletop uh, is more green and turquoise coming into that so just thought I'd mention that and it's probably even safe to even add that just about there. There we go. Uh, can I see a couch with a red cushion? You know what? That could be it. It could be a couch. It could be an armchair. And that back bit there is, say, for example, the window. You know, and you can almost see a window sill. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Alright, let's get to this area. Um turquoise extra dark just on the top here the tricky part would be is to uh, blend it with the soft tools like I said you don't have to use the soft tool sponges if you wanted to use the brushes go right ahead um, um, I just wanted to show that, you know, both can be achieved uh, for those who are in um, are funny about the dust. So, okay, let's just, let's just put, I'm just going to put that aside just for the moment. Probably in its, 
Right, okay. Hmm. I might change that for the moment. Uh, it's just that it's got green and I want some um, crisp uh, light colours. So I'm just going to... There's nothing wrong with this at the moment, so I'm going to reuse that when I need to do some darker colours. But I just... Okay, so. That's what I'm after. And there's a bit of a green in there as well. Let's just put these aside just for the moment. Let's put uh, that aside for the moment. My neutrals are probably... We'll need a. I reckon I will use that instead. See how we go. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to put a bit of a line down here for a moment. About there. It's a bit weird how I've done it like that, but anyway, I just wanted to make mark it. That's all, really. Okay. Yellow ochre tint. almost like a window, isn't it? Um, here's my question to you for the brush users. What do you prefer using? Um, well, you know what my preference is, but, you know. Um, but, you know, I think everything has its place. I've got to say that as well. But um, what, actually, probably the better question is, what do you enjoy using the most? Do you enjoy using the bristle brushes the way we use them? or the soft tools uh, applicators um, I mean personally uh, personally I believe that they've got their place there's no two ways about it um, I think for me the I, I think the deal breaker for me is that um, being able to use uh, use the brushes when it comes to more intricate areas and details even before you use pastel pencils I think this is the this is what I feel is for me um, yeah Um, hang on a 
was sick. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Here we go. For me, let me see. Uh, for me, brushes of all kinds, including even soft ones and the sponges. Yeah, there you go. See, that's what I mean. Okay, I use both depending on the size of the area. Yep. And Carol says, I do find using brushes for background causes too much dust. Yes, I prefer the sponges for the background and totally get it. And this is why I'm using the sponges, of course. But yes, I believe everything has its place. Yeah. Yeah, the brushes for the background, it does cause a lot of dust. That's why I thought, hmm, maybe we should, um, maybe we should just do it this way. After all, that's what pan pastels are made for. So they're not creating dust. Um, yellow ochre there's that um, couch that you're talking about there let's see if we can put this couch in <laughs> this blurry looking couch Thalo Extra Dark, just here. I'm going to use the red iron oxide. There we go. That little, the pillow. 
just about there. neutral grey just around here Just a touch of the ex um, the permanent green, extra dark, just a touch really. So right now I'm just going to blend the edges. Uh, I can see that I don't have enough pastel down on pastel mat so I'm just going to keep on building layers as I see them. Uh, I'm using now neutral grey um, tint just in between here and blend. Uh, okay. I do find uh, using brushes for a background cause. Yeah, I don't know. Hang on. I read that. What am I, what am I saying? Sorry. Just getting too involved in this, I think, in my project. touch of the red iron oxide shade just up here I believe just a touch do is um, see if I can get a, a clean sponge and do some nice blending. I mean, look, this is what I've got. It's the square one with, you know, well, it looks like you can fit a round thing in a square thing. <laughs> in a square. I wasn't going to say a square hole, but you know what I mean. 
I'm just trying to be funny. See a bit of that green, permanent green. Just a touch, permanent green. Gotta be careful don't cause mud too so It is, it is dusty, Carol, when you're using brushes. Yes, I do find that. What have I got there? One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Uh, still got to do this side. Yeah. Let's not forget about this side. It's sort of there's a, a bluey tinge behind that but I don't want to introduce uh, too many new colors so whatever I've got on one side I'm going to use on the other so um, I will use the Thalo I'm um, sorry the turquoise extra dark just in this area here Sienna, extra dark just underneath here. neutral grey tint in this area here. I 
Well, I'll tell you now, the um, the masking film seems to be holding up pretty good. So I'm happy about that. It's a nice relief. Still, I like my um, Express It. Using a bit of um, the neutral grey extra dark in this area here. It's almost like violet, but this is good enough. Yeah. Okay, I've put on a clean um, applicator because I just want to, I don't want to contaminate the colours between, but I want to get a really nice smoothing effect, like a smooth effect. So that's why I'm doing that. Now, I'm not getting exact close enough is good would like to use I'm just going to keep that clean for when I want to blend uh, and not contaminate but um, I want to add a neutral grey tint uh, just above here yellow ochre
bit of the green, just a touch. just a little bit more. I'm going to use my raw umber tint. I don't want to use white just yet. That's the this is about the lightest. Just before white. Which I want to make some areas lighter. Grey tint. Must have that red cushion in there, hey? <laughs> Get over it, Chrissy. Express it are a no go. Yeah, I know. I know, Kathy. Just you, slap me. Slap me. That's what you got to do. Is slap me. Um, Jerry says um, it's fascinating how many colors are in that background. Absolutely. Just have a look. I need to sort of, you know, let's have a look at what's going on. And you know what? It just looks so weird like that, you know, and I know it does, but you've just got to trust the process, I suppose. Because when you start doing things that are you know, for example, all of that being in the background and then of course then you start doing these which are so much more detailed, the fur is so much more detailed, the water is so much more detailed, the frame, the water, the the little splashy bits is what it's going to do is just going to make the background look so much further away. And yeah, at the moment you can't really see that, but okay. I think this is okay to begin with. Again, before I 
before we go into sorry before we go into um, the other areas I'm actually going to let this sit and let me have a look at it and come back with fresh eyes that always um, helps um, and it's extremely blurry as you can see like I don't think you can get this any blurrier I reckon yep I reckon and what I might do is I might leave it um, right there with this session um, it's been very messy the last two days hasn't it um, yes yes all right so uh, thank you all so much um, uh, for those who have kept me company uh, during this session and for those on the replay uh, feel free to ask me questions because next week uh, we'll work on using affinity and um, it'd be good to have a few things ready to go because I've got notes um, it'd be good to you know to have a handful of things so if there's any questions please um, put them in the comments say for example um, anywhere and hopefully I'll um, I'll see them but look thank you all again so much um, uh, so much uh, really appreciate your company it makes a hell of it makes the time go by so quick before you re before I realize it you know we've done um, a whole heap of artwork but anyway thank you so much and I'll see you all next week okay bye for now